Hey, what's up, guys? We're in Total War Empire at the moment. I'm going to be playing as the French. My opponent is going to be Great Britain hosting in this battle. And apparently, um, he wanted to deploy in a very defensive formation. So he's going to be doing just that. He has a ton of artillery. So in the front, he's got two of the six-pounder uh, horse-drawn artillery. Always love these guys. Super mobile. And they roll up, and they're going to start to unload on me. Behind that, he has a 24-pounder howitzer, foot artillery moving up. He has another one already set up. Uh, behind that, he has some militia, light dragoons, which are good at holding the flanks, line infantry, some grenadiers, some militia, and then hidden around here are going to be a bunch of Ferguson rifles. And then as my cavalry starts to probe the chevaux leger, what we're going to find is some guards in the flank here. So my opponent is, yep, withdrawing everything, and he's just going to be holding out. Uh, he's in it for the long haul. So my Chevaux Leger are pushing around. I was hoping to maybe snipe some artillery. Um, I just barely clipped this guard unit. Surprised it didn't get any shots off. Anyways, I'm going to keep going and go for the rear. My force is on the approach. I have just one artillery piece that I've positioned behind this little piece of terrain to avoid direct fire. I am then going to be pushing up. I have Chasseur à pied. Militia. Militia. Where's my other militia? Everything's kind of running up. Anyway, it's going to be four or five line infantry, uh, two militias, uh, here's the other one. Then I have some chasseurs pied, short range uh, skirmishers, and then tirailleurs. Two of these guys pushing up. These are the extreme range, 125 range um, infantry that I really need to keep the enemy back. So my militia are moving forward, line infantry are moving forward, all kinds of troops. I have some infantry vieux back here, which are some really cool elite units. And then in the back, I have Maison du Roi basically the king's household troops here keeping well out of artillery range I have a carabiner force and basically everything is now pushing up I know my opponent is going to sit steady I tried to snipe at his um, troops but they dismounted and pulled back uh, there's a little bit of a weird glitch that happens when artillery is uh, limbered up like this and on the move they are essentially bulletproof when it comes to musket fire although they can get charged they can uh, take artillery fire, but musket fire does absolutely nothing. So this is a very good build for my opponent in terms of just sitting it out. These howitzers have extreme range. They're going to be chipping away at your guys. Then what he does is he advances as far as he feels comfortable with the six pounders. Gets some early shots off, so you'll be seeing a couple corpses littering the battlefield here and there. He had not canister, but almost something similar. And then he just retreats, no casualties sustained on his end, it delays my approach, picks off a couple key units, and then he continues to fire away at me. Now, what you would maybe want to do for me is, you know, charge straight up the center, try and suppress his howitzers. However, you'll notice that we have not seen where his skirmishers are at, and I know, you know, presumably his skirmishers are going to be right down here in the middle. That is what makes the most sense. So what I'm going to start to do is stake up my position here on either flank and slowly start an encirclement where I want to push is over on the right I know he has some guards so I'm going to try and do is push up with some of my extreme range unit my opponent knows that my TILs are going to be very key forces extreme range troops that can start sniping at his guys he knows he wants to get rid of them so he's going to be targeting them first I'm sneaking around with some carabiners maybe to get at his cavalry or sorry his artillery and then I'm going to be reinforcing with some more skirmishers and other troops to perhaps push back on this my opponent is very very uh, defensive uh, and he has all the right to be I mean he has the artillery advantage it is my prerogative to come to him I do manage to somewhat slip by his militia the militia can't form up into square and so I have a tough choice to make what I decide to do is try and take it out as artillery I feel like both of these units carabiners and artillery are worth basically the same amount of cost but if I can start taking out his advantage it will be to my advantage however his militia turned about just in time these guys are something fired at me, and he just cleaned up. Oh, we can watch one of those shells. He cleaned up my carabiners. Um, probably if I had lancers on this side, this would have gone much, much better. And I didn't even kill more than two of his troops. So a quick response on his end. These dragoons are perfect for beating back charges. They can fire on the go. And here I sent a probing mission, which was my militia. And yep, Ferguson riflemen. Of course. The <laughs> camper's best, uh, best friend. Not necessarily that my opponent is camping, he's not camping the red line, he's just playing very, very defensively. So one of my militia units is thrown in the garbage. I do get a couple nice early shots off with my Charcel Pied. However, he's going to be hyper aggressive with his troops. So here they come, they're going to be closing in on me. Coming up, I do pop my stakes just at the last minute. 
so it's gonna stake up some of his cav. I kill a fair amount of them, so I would say um, the trade, oh, not so good. I did lose half my unit. His, he lost half his unit, but his cavalry is expendable. The purpose of his cav is to prevent me from curling up the flanks, and by killing my chasseur up here, he's done just that. He wasn't able to get all the way to my artillery like I bet he was hoping to. I brought back my Maison du Roi to rebuff that approach. Ferguson's are going to push up the center. He knows I have no real skirmishers to deal with him. Chasseur up here pulling back. My TLEOs are trying to support the right flank. I had pushed up with some chasseur up here to try and poke around. I killed about 20 of his elite guards. Um, but then he countercharged with some hidden cav. I had forgotten about these. And he's going to continue to get these nice, easy kills. It's often easier to micro as a defender because you're static. You're not moving around with as many forces. And so counteracting your opponent, I'm microing forces on this side of the battlefield. And he's countercharging me here and there. I did get my Chevaux Léger into the mix. Going to try and take out his Dragoons. He's going to move up with his guards. Triple rank. This is the ideal way to deploy units who can fire in platoon. I'm throwing in my own general just to try and tie up this fight as quickly as possible. My Carabiners are going to try and push up the center. I know I want to take out his Ferguson Rifleman. My opponent recognizes the threat. He's going to pull up some Grenadiers and some Militia Forces. All the while his artillery has been firing away. I did break his infantry here. Back over in this position. I am not able to clean up his forces just yet. His cavalry is being particularly obstinate. And with these guards nearby, it's going to start to spell doom. He's targeted my infantry, so that's why I pulled them back as quickly as I could. I did have some troops here to try and fire away at his grenadiers and other forces, but it is not going to be worth it. So all these little micro lapses is costing me units, so I pull back. I'm going to try and fall back to my skirmishers. But every time I fall back, it just means more time that his artillery has had to fire away at me. So that is the strength of, obviously, the defensive position. Now, I did break his calf, so I'm going to be able to uh, push around this flank, or at least I thought I would. And here comes the police warning me not to take such action. I don't know if you guys can hear those sirens. But anyways, I pull back before I take too many shots. What I'm going to try and do with my cav is take out key units. I saw that his uh, militia here was overextended. I have line infantry, TLOs, and other forces firing away. His guards, however, are going to be able to clip a couple of my units just as I get in on the charge. What my goal was here was to break the militia and then perhaps charge right through the gap. I was hoping to pull through and take out this huge cluster of artillery, but I, uh, I've been cycling through the different total wars and I forgot that cavalry is a bit sticky, especially in the early period. Um, and I didn't bring the right cavalry. I mean, these are carabiners, not meant to charge through militia. If I had brought lancers, heavy troops, could have charged through that, flattened it, and continued on. These militias somehow firing um, while they were repositioning, so that was to their advantage. I'm going to be able to destroy them with a lot of superior forces coming in, but I'm getting whittled away in terms of my key units. I did sneak one chevaux léger around the back. Nothing really here to oppose me. I don't think my opponent sees me. I'm going to be going to try and target... His artillery that's been firing away. Look at this Ferguson Rifleman in dense blocks. This is meant to chew through infantry. Tons of units and his militia is holding out spectacularly. Drawing the attention of all my forces before I can even get in. But now finally I get a bit of a reprieve. I'm going to suppress this position. I'm going to clip both of them it looks like. Um, going to cause the carriages to run away. So what this means is my opponent can no longer relimber. So that's going to be good. He has no more of these dragoons, so he can't come back and shoot me. So this is going to be good. But somehow I have no idea how my chevaux légers are going to route. No idea how that happened. These guys weren't firing on me. Somehow I just route against these uh, six pounders. So somehow my opponent getting all of the advantages uh, this battle. Tried to charge into his grenadiers to disrupt that formation. I'm going to push up en masse with my infantry. On this front, I have Maison du Roi facing off against the militia. And yes, I'm going to be destroying him handedly. But militia trading pretty well, especially with two of them. I have line infantry to help out, uh, but he's doing a good job focusing on me. My opponent fuels the pressure here, and so he's going to pull back with his key Ferguson rifles. I got a shot off with my militia. I'm going to, militia, I'm going to pull back. And allow now my line infantry to get their volleys off. So I kind of just want to watch. Oh, those Ferguson rifles are going to be devastating. My opponent has a really good setup. And now I'm going to push up with more troops. However, he has double line fire. Going to be, you know, triple line fire almost in some places. Black watch. This is not a good position for me to form up. Actually, mind you, this is like quadruple 
lines because he has artillery in the back firing on me. So this is uh, going straight into the maw. I figured I had enough infantry to try and chew away at his forces and, you know, better commit now than never. Tiaio in the distance going to be picking apart his line infantry. I'm forcing this area back. I was hoping to clip this, but he is just chewing into my guys in the center. Grenadiers here. Going to be unloading plus canister shot. I mean, that is going to be end, the end, excuse me, to my line infantry force. So this dense British block, very, very hard for me to break at this point. Had I brought more cavalry, this would have been the perfect moment to spring the trap. I think I was a bit too um, eager with my cavalry. And look at this. This is ideal. My opponent knows this map well, knows how to use the ridge line here to just get total suppressive fire. I decided to pull back because all of a sudden my guys just got shredded. Ferguson rifles have incredible reload rate, accuracy and all that. And I just got absolutely thrashed close quarters with this... Ah, this battery is killing me. It's firing like canister shot into my guys. Just carving holes, sw making Swiss cheese out of the French. And usually they like the mention of Swiss cheese, but not when it comes to describing their infantry. Um, so yeah, just my inability to take out these key units. None of the artillery is dead. All of his skirmishers are up. The only real advantage I've had is taking out his cavalry. Even that isn't that great. I do have infantry up close, which I will be winning, but again, it's just against these militia, which are tiding me back, slowly kiting me, and just buying time for his howitzers to fire away. Maison de Roi already losing half strength. That is not what you want to see against militia. I do bring in my general's bodyguard unit, because I figured I have to break this flank. And so what I decide to do, he's full strength. I'm going to charge him, but he gets hit by an artillery piece. Multiple artillery pieces already down to half strength. And even before he gets the charge off, he breaks. So this artillery is just a thorn in my side. And then now he's going to fire into the rear. This was a risky move with my general. It was the only cavalry piece I had left. I really needed to break this. If I could have broken this militia, I could have charged through to this. Then hit, in the, ba hit the back of this force. Recommitted in the center. And I think I would have gotten an edge. But at this point, it's turning against me. My opponent's routing forces have come back. The militia is returning. The general's bodyguard is here. And really no advantage uh, to be had. My artillery is finally getting some free reign, so I'm returning a bit of the favor here. But god, this is just so brutal. And I really despise this um, this type of shot on the artillery. It just seems really overpowered. So um, I can't remember what it's called. It's not canister, but it's somewhere in between. And it just does so much damage. And I believe there's a bit, a bit of a glitch when you can fire away at units outside of the range, which is why you saw my opponent using these early on. And these guys are going to rack up a tremendous number of kills. Combine that with my inability to take out his Fergusons. And he can deal with me at range at ease. The guards here are proving incredibly hard to deal with. I have to win one of the flanks. We saw what happened when I pushed up the center. But look what I have to match up against the guards. I mean, a line infantry force. That's not going to cut it. And I do get triple line fire while he's in platoon. So in the preliminary volleys, I should be doing well. But already we're even at 90 to 92 and platoon fire is now gonna take the lead i'm gonna try and pull in more guys to overwhelm his guards but i don't have much tils and line infantry he's gonna beat me my center has completely collapsed and on this front i've turned around my guards uh, maison du royal once again just they've been drowning uh in the fight against the peasantry which is what they what, what they live for but really not where i need them so like i said this is perhaps one of the flanks where I could win. It looks like I've been able to do just that, albeit barely. My artillery really forcing my opponent back. Black Watch having lost all the way down to 100, or sorry, from 120 down to 44. So the artillery was in large part, you know, to thank for that. So I am, like I said, returning the favor a little bit. I'm going to put the pressure on here, try and focus on his line infantry. I have my TLUs here focusing on his Ferguson rifles. Uh, and then I pulled back and disengaged on this side to try and overwhelm just one of his guard units and just slowly pick at this see what kind of uh, results I can get the howitzers gonna be unlimbering or relimbering again knowing that this is a sensitive part of the battle they're gonna be pulling out of here once again drawing out of my reach just when I thought I could get an advantage his own Ferguson rifleman presumably out of ammo at this point are gonna charge into my guys I'm going to get a couple volleys, which is going to clip maybe a third of them. He's going to charge in, and I should win this pretty handedly. Yeah, they're already wavering. I broke this line of infantry, so finally I get to push forward. Black Watch, however, is going to be standing watch here at the cusp. 
and try firing at me. And he's made it, he's only one at double experience chevrons, having killed a lot of guys. Um, and now it's going to be the deciding factor, charging into the Black Watch. However, what I noticed at this point is, look at this, my Maison du Roi, not firing. And that's because they've expended all of the ammunition. So they're going to be tar told to charge into the Black Watch. My center has pretty much crumbled. Delios with 15 against the Ferguson with 56. Yeah, no contest. And on this flank, I've pulled back. He's got uh, guards in the woods. And there's a little glitch here where you can continue to fire away at your guys, even though they're out of range. That's not good. His general here has been able to avoid combat, and with none of my artillery shots to take him out, he's going to be fully able to just cleave through my guys. And meanwhile, I have my Maison du Roi, 30 of them, against the Black Watch with 31. So this is going to be a close-fought battle. My guys are confident and active. His are confident and fresh. Looks like the advantage is going to be really, really even, although I believe it should go in my favor. I'll watch a little bit of this epic fight. My guys... I believe are a little bit higher tier than higher tier than Coldstream, although I'm not sure. So this fight would probably 25 to 24. Ooh, it's going to be close. We're both wavering. Um, however, the deciding factor is going to be the general in the vicinity. Oh, and I do break the Black Watch. That is going to be a uh, you know a nice morale booster there. So now finally going to be able to charge into the rear of the enemy force. But there's not much left on my side uh, to gain this victory. So Maison du Roi. Going to be charging into this fresh Grenadier Forest with 56 men. My own guys having 24. This is not going to be good. I do hope to at least tarnish the English flag here. We're going after it. Oh my god, that Grenadier just choking the shit out of my guy. Breaking his neck. And there goes my Maison du Roi. So, at the end of the day, look at this destruction everywhere on the battle. My opponent does a celebratory uh, square formation, I guess. Um, but the battle's not quite over. I do have units that are pretty much all routing. My artillery is kind of the only thing left. And what this makes me think is, if this were Warhammer, man, everything would have routed like halfway through the battle. And I'm so glad. Ooh, and I get a nice parting shot against the enemy general. There he is. Lucky shot there. A couple more going down. So a lot of nice... Uh, pickups here at the end of the battle. Killing the enemy Blackwatch, killing the enemy general. It's not all wrong. Oh, and he's going to charge straight into these stakes. Nice. <laughs> uh, but like I was saying, the problem with Warhammer, well, there's a lot of problems with Warhammer uh, gameplay. It goes super quick, way too fast. You would never have a scenario like this with just one unit remaining. Uh, and that is one of the things that contributes to the battle it's just being so quick. That and the fact that there's almost no skirmishing phase. It's all about rush uh, and sniping enemy generals and then having the entire army crumble. Really not that fun in the long term. I really hope they find a way to stretch it out. Anyways, as my artillery crew is tied down against the enemy general, I have brought back some line infantry. So we're going to get a face off and in the... Staring contest here, I do get the first volley, so a couple of his guards are going to be dropping. This is this is intimidating, to say the least. My guy's desperately trying to reload to get a second volley, but this platoon fire just raking my lines. I didn't even get that many kills, but I will get the second volley off before I break, so let's watch this. There we go. He's got 73. Oh. Wow, that was pretty good. So 40 shots, we kill about 10 of them. Not bad, but yeah, my guys are dropping quick. And plus he has the canister, fire, whatever that is. Look how devastating this thing is. It can fire essentially shotgun shells all the way over here. And so now my TLA are coming back. Throwing everything. I mean, I once again emphasize that this scenario would never happen in Total War Warhammer. But anyways, they're going to reload and they're going to try and get some final parting shots off. Once again, again, trying to score a morale victory here. Sentimental victory. Reloading. 24 shots in the barrel. A couple of the enemy oh, shots falling just short. So it looks like we're going to get the full 24 to fire off. He's at 63, and we kill four men with that volley. Oh, a couple more. Yep. And they're going to stop right on the corpses of my men. The officer with the drummer kit. Another thing I wish they had in Warhammer. I wish they had um, musicians and bannermen, which is key to the tabletop. I really hope that's something they represent later on. <laughs> this little drummer boy. Keeping the drum beat going. 
And they're gonna break my guard, my uh, TLU. So that's it. Uh, except I do have my foot artillerymen are somewhere still alive. I can't remember where they ended up, but they are somewhere in the battlefield. Here they are. Now, finally, they do break and route, having realized, yes, the fight is in fact over. So, anyways, that was a bloody fight. Um, I think the build I had just was not really suited to charging my opponent. I made too many micro lapses. I should have just focused super hard and rushed the flanks. Should not have wasted my cavalry as I did. Um, but I just, uh, when you're on a ticking clock against that much artillery, it really is hard to restrain yourself and not throw yourself into the mix, which is why the artillery defensive position like this works with Ferguson rifles. It's all about frustrating you into making mistakes, and I definitely made my fair share of mistakes, which cost me the battle. My opponent also played very, very well. So let's take a look at the unit stats. Maison du Roi with almost 200 kills, getting double chevrons of experience. Light infantry and TIO doing well. Overall doing okay. However, Infantry Vieux with zero kills. Um, they got hit by, I believe it was um, Ferguson Fire, then they were charged by Cavalry, so that is why a couple of these guys just got racked, uh, pff, raped, or what am I trying to say? They just they just got, yeah, destroyed. We'll, we'll go with that kind of language. Anyways, yeah, look how many of my guys got 0, 0, 0, 2, 5, 6, 8, just not using my units well, and I think the Chasseur Pied were also a bad call. They did almost nothing for me. Should have focused more on the TIOs. I was just ah, not anticipating my opponent would have this kind of uh, positioning. That's the, that's one of the things that happens when you deploy in the blind. Um, you're not quite sure what to face off against. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.